Whoops. <laughs> so I was playing some video games today. And no, this isn't turning into a streaming channel. Playing Metro Exodus, and I was thinking back to improving performance on this. You can overclock your graphics card and your general processor so that you can get more frames per second or the amount of times that it's rendered to the screen. In video games, that's done pretty frequently. So I thought, why not try it for video editing? Maybe it'll render faster. So let's check that out. To give you a quick example on what happens when you overclock your processor and your graphics cards with gaming, check out Metro Exodus frame rate here on the left. You'll notice the graph goes up to 70 and you see a peak around 70. My average frame rate is at 44 frames per second. I then overclocked the processor from a 3.4 gigahertz base clock to a 4 gigahertz all core overclock and I overclocked my graphics card up 500 mega megahertz on the memory and 100 megahertz on the core clock and it came out to 60 frames per second with the top of the graph and the peak being around 90. So you can see a significant difference here. You've got about a 25% difference in improvement with the same hardware just by overclocking. Let's see if that carries over into DaVinci Resolve and rendering times. Okay, just ran renders for a few hours. Let's look at what I was testing against. First, I was testing in a base configuration, a Threadripper 1950X with stock 3.4 gigahertz clocks. I was using my Gigabyte Aorus 2080 Ti graphics card at stock clocks and 64 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM clocked at 2133, the DDR4 standard. In the overclock configuration, I was using the same hardware, but the Threadripper was running at 4 gigahertz across all cores. My uh, 2080 Ti had an extra 104 megahertz on its core clock and 499 megahertz in its memory clock and my RAM was running up to its rated spec at 3000 megahertz. Let's look at the results. It's quite interesting and I think there's two takeaways. The first one here is that if you've got simple timelines, in other words, you've got some cuts, you've got a little bit of color, not too many special effects, the difference between a base and an OC uh, in terms of render times is not much. It's pretty negligible, likely not worth the extra stress you're putting your hardware under, the heat and the power consumption that it's using. You can see in a native encoder, H.264, it was four seconds faster when it was OC'd. Now this is where it gets interesting. The NVIDIA uh, H.264 and H.265 encoding actually ran slower when it was under OC. And I think that's because the clocks didn't affect the hardware encoder that's included on the graphics card, but the heat generated did and likely slowed it down a touch so that it would manage the thermals better. We'll see some of that extend uh, a little bit differently as we look at the next slide, which is a timeline that has heavy effects and heavy color. You can see that native H.264 rendered the heavy effects in 831 with no overclock and 756 with the overclock. So we're seeing something that's um, maybe telling a story that it could possibly be worth it. And as you move into the NVIDIA encoder, H.264, 848 to 817, and H.265, 850 to 815. I should note I ran each of these tests three times and took the average, though it was quite funny. They were typically within a second of each other. Quite predictable. So what we're seeing here, you read that right. The native H.264 against the same exact timeline when overclocked was faster than the NVIDIA hardware encoder. And I think I know why that is. The hardware encoder, it, it eats the entire graphics card with uh, the CUDA cores working on the effects and the hardware encoder encoding. The processor sits around 10 or 15 percent. It's barely used. Whereas when you're looking at the native encoder with the H.264, you're able to leverage the rendering across the CPU, and it was up 80, 90 percent consumed. And you were able to consume the GPU, running at 80 or 90 percent, building the effects in the background. So you got to use both of the processors in your system rather than 
just the one. And I think that's why you see faster render times running on the native encoder rather than the NVIDIA encoder when you're talking about heavy GPU utilization. You can see that a little bit more when you look at these charts that show the processor utilization during these times. So the two key takeaways here, it's probably not worth it to overclock your hardware. I just, I don't see enough timelines that would differentiate this o OC, uh, even in large scale movie productions. Uh, you'd have to get some pretty serious cooling. I do have a Noctua cooler on this. Uh, it's an air cooler, but it does a better job than my Intermax uh, Liquitech 2 that I had on there. It's a 360 rad. So I feel like I've got adequate cooling. It just isn't worth it for the overclock if we're talking about doing some video editing. When you look at gaming, sure enough, it popped up and was worth it. But here I would say it's not. Second, if you've got heavy timelines with a lot of effects and color, I wouldn't bother with the NVIDIA encoder unless you really like H.265. Instead, I'd stick with the native encoder. It's going to be faster for you. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.